Elementary teachers, let's grow food gardens with your class in 2024. Unfortunately, most of you won't even take the first step to do it because of all the obstacles in your mind. I listed those obstacles yesterday and I promised that I would go through them one by one. And today I want to talk about the first one. But before I do that, I have to tell you all of these plus much, much more are thoroughly explained in the School Gardens with Ease 2024 free 60 minute webinar for elementary teachers. Go grab your spot. Okay, so the first obstacle in the way of growing food gardens with your class for elementary teachers is the outdoor space that you probably don't have. Even if you do have one, I would still hear me out, but most of you don't. And getting one requires approvals, garden design expertise, a bunch of stuff that you probably don't want to worry about or deal with. Now, should that stop you? If you don't have an outdoor designated school garden, should that stop you? Absolutely not. First of all, you don't need it. Second of all, especially if you're new to this, you don't want it. What you want to do first in the first year of your school garden project is a classroom garden, not an outdoor school garden. Because for most of you, depending on where in the world you live, you have to kind of extend your growing season and you have to start indoors to grow your seedlings anyway. So why not take advantage of that opportunity and grow a flourishing classroom garden in the first year first. You don't need to plant them outside. You can donate them. You can sell them with your students in an entrepreneurial program. You can give them away. And the short maturing ones, you can actually harvest and enjoy together. I know that an outdoor school garden sounds a lot more exciting, but a flourishing educational classroom garden can be really exciting. It, it's not as boring as it sounds. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm all a huge fan of outdoor school gardens, but they come after a successful classroom garden. They come in the phase two of your garden project, most probably next year, because they do come with their own difficulties and obstacles. Sorry, the hair just wants to jump up today. I don't know why. And you don't want to deal with those difficulties and obstacles. You want to make the learning curve easy for yourself. Now, even if you do have an outdoor school garden, you probably want to start indoors first. And then after you make that really successful, after your confidence is boosted in growing those seedlings and teaching in that garden, after your community's trust is also boosted because you grew an amazing successful classroom garden, you're thinking, whoa, imagine what she or he can do if we help them grow an outdoor school garden next year they're going to be supporting you like crazy and next year you are you know you know exactly how to grow those indoor seedlings and what you now need to learn is how to do an outdoor school garden not only it's much easier this way this is essentially the only way that it'll, it will work because after a decade of experience of growing school gardens with hundreds of teachers and thousands of students i know that this is the only way to make it work and I'm explaining this two phase plan thoroughly with all the practical details and all handouts and everything in my School Gardens with Ease 2024 free 60 minute webinar for elementary teachers. Go grab your spot.